How's everybody doing? So how many of you have had some challenges in the last week with what we're going through right now? Amen? And how many of you have been able to share some things that you've learned with other people? Good, good. So I wanted to read a scripture for you. Um, Today my mom had some back pain, some really bad back pain that she hasn't had probably in a year. And we knew what it was. Um, And we prayed against it and thanked God for what we knew that he had already done. Um, And I just wanted to read this scripture just to remind you about how your healing may be instantaneous and it may not be. Luke 17, 14 to 16 says, they went and while they were on their way, became healed. One of them, when he realized that he was healed, turned around and came back shouting his gratitude, glorifying God. So while they were on their way, so when you're on your way, that's not an instant thing. You're on your way, you're going about life, and then... The manifestation comes. And then the gentleman, the one that has said that when he realized, so when you realize something, you're not thinking about it. So you're not thinking about it, you're dwelling, you're not dwelling on it, all of a sudden you just realize. So that's the way it's gonna happen for some of us. So don't be discouraged. You come down to the altar, you get prayed for, you just feel the power of God all over you. You go, you walk away and you still have that pain. You still have that situation. That does not negate the fact that by his stripes you are healed. Pain does not negate that fact. It is a fact. It's not an opinion. It's not a thought. It's not a wish. It's a fact. Pain does not negate it. The doctor's report does not negate it. Nothing negates the fact that by his stripes, you are, we are healed. Amen? So tonight we're going to have a testimony from Miss Gloria, and I should have asked you to sit up front because I know Pastor Charles is going to be going like this. So come on, Miss Gloria. There you go. (laughs) Miss Gloria is going to give a powerful testimony, and then after her, you're going to hear from um, Brother Dave Williams, who has a wonderful teaching. I've got to read the notes, and he has a wonderful teaching uh, for us tonight. Thank you, Candice. Uh, When Candice asked me to come and share my testimony about my, my healing testimony, my thought was, no, I'm not going to stand before a room full of people and talk. However, my mouth said, but of course I will. Um, last week she called and said, add to your testimony, carrying the vase of flowers. I'll explain that later. In early 2000, I was living in Alexandria, Virginia, working in the District of Columbia at the Correctional Treatment Facility Uh, That's part of the D.C. Department of Corrections, and I was the training director. I went in for an annual mammogram on a Tuesday of that week. Didn't think anything about it, but the following day, I received a call from the doctor's office asking me to return because they wanted to take some additional x-rays. I was not happy about that because mammograms are not pleasant. So I went the next day, I was a bit grumpy, and I was thinking, they messed up. After the technician completed the second set of x-rays, she said, "Uh, the doctor would like to see you. Here's his room number, go up. So I went to the doctor's office. I can't even recall his name now. When I walked in, I noticed there were two other people in the room and he introduced himself and he started explaining about my mammogram and it showed this abnormal mass that was of concern and that was uh, the reason they had asked me back for the second set of x-rays. Um, the oncologist turned around to that little x-ray machine they have on the, the counter there, and he was pointing to these two different x-rays, and they just looked like peaks and valleys to me. But what they were were two different sets of x-rays of my left breast. <clears throat> and he pointed to the pictures, and he stated, yes, it's just as we suspected. It's TNBC. And I'm thinking, TNBC? And he goes, yeah, triple negative breast cancer. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, whatever that means. And then he says, and we need to remove that right away. I'm sitting there stunned, and I'm thinking, he's not talking about me. And he asked me if I had any questions, and I said no. And I recall very distinctively, I got up and walked out of the room. I got in my car and went back to work. Uh, I went back to work. We were getting ready for an ACA audit. If you know anything, that's an American Correctional Audit. And if you run a correctional facility, if you don't pass that audit, you know, that's like the end of the world. So I went back to work on that. Uh, but by the time I got back to my office, my POC, primary care, was calling and saying, look, they're scheduling you for surgery next week. It's going to be on a Thursday. They need you to come back on Monday for a final set of x-rays. I recall sitting at my my desk thinking, well, 
look, God, it's you and me now, but we're going to get through this, and I need your help. I went in a few hours later to dismiss the pre-service class like I did every day, and we talked about the training sessions and what had been going on. And was getting ready, I was getting ready to dismiss, but before I could dismiss, this young lady, Belinda McClanahan, said, uh, Miss Lloyd, can we pray for you? And I'm kind of looking at her like, well, uh, okay, but let's dismiss the class first. Because you have to remember, this is D.C. D.C. folks are very litigious, you know. So if I kept them one minute over time because we were praying, that would have been something that we would have to deal with. So dismiss the class, nobody left. Everybody stayed. She prayed over me. She prayed a healing prayer. I, it was a simple prayer of protection and healing. I don't recall the words, but I do recall the feeling. When she, you know, everybody surrounded me, I recall the, the hands that were on my shoulder, the hands that was around my waist, the hands that was on my arms, and I remember Belinda's hands holding mine. And I knew at that moment that whatever it was going to be, that I was in God's hand and we were going to handle it. That Monday, I went in for the final x-rays, and we discussed the surgery schedule, and my POC was so concerned because she says, Gloria, you know, for black women, this thing is really terrible. This TNBC is really aggressive, and, you know, you may have to have a full mastectomy. You need to think about this. And I'm going, okay, I'm still, I'm thinking, you're not talking to me. You're talking to somebody else. The American Cancer Society lady was there, and she was sewing all, the, all these bras that I could have and everything. And I think, have these people lost their minds? They can't be talking about me. But, you know, I'm still going on with this. Fast forward. Thursday comes around. And surgery is scheduled for 1 p.m. I'm to check in to Kaiser Permanente, Fairfax, at 10 o'clock that morning. I run by, I said, I need to run into D.C. to take care of some ACA files before this happens. Because honestly, I didn't know how long I was going to be out, but I wanted to make sure my files were ready. So I get in, and you know the traffic on I-95 and 395 is a mess in the morning. I left at 6.45, I got to the office about 7, oh, about 7 o'clock. The duty officer said, Miss Lloyd, your doctor's office has been calling you. They need you to call them right now. She wants you to call, you, call her before you go into the hospital. And I said, okay. So I piddle around a bit, and then I called her. And she goes, Gloria, where are you? And she goes, before I could say anything, she said, there's nothing there. I said, I said nothing where? She said, in your breast, there's nothing there. <laughs> and I'm going, uh, you, need to, you need to come to the office right now. And so off to Alexander I go, and I arrive in the office. The oncologist is on the phone with Vanderbilt, and he's raising all kinds of noise because he thinks that they're misreading the x-rays. So finally, probably some bigwig there got on the phone with him, and I'm listening, and he goes, yes, the first two sets of x-rays do show the TNBC. He said, but the one that you just got, there's nothing there. <laughs> nothing there. While they were talking, I got up and went back to work. So, it was a, that evening, I walked the Tidal Basin. And everybody, you know, D.C. Tidal Basin is about two and a half miles walk. And I recall, I was walking along the Tidal Basin. I don't recall what I was praying, but I do recall this litany of, I was just crying and I was just saying, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. That was my, that's what I remember saying. I don't remember any fancy words or prayer or anything. It was just this overflowing thank you to God. The next day, I shared with Belinda, my boss, and my coworkers what had been going on because I hadn't told them anything about it. They thought I was going in for a typical, you know, female issue is what I told them. And I shared with all, and I talked to Belinda about it, and I talked about how these 32 people had surrounded me in prayer and everything, and how Belinda had spoke healing over me. And I asked Belinda how she knew. And she said she did know. She says, God put it in her mind to pray for me. 
and she obeyed. And often I hear people standing here and they're talking about when God puts something on their mind and they just don't do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Because it may be me. So do it. Now about the flowers. On Thursday last week, I came, in a little, came to the campus a little early because it was a day of, Mr. Green, of Jean Mard's homegoing service and I was ushering that day. And a delivery person was standing at the Life Center door with a large bouquet of flowers. And I explained to the delivery guy that he needed to bring them over here to the sanctuary. And he was kind of confused. He was saying, where's the sanctuary? What door do I go in? And I said, okay, oh, that's okay. I'll take them. So I took this big bouquet of flowers from this guy. And as soon as I put it in my hand, this loud voice said, and it wasn't my voice, I know what I sound like, it said, you ain't got no grip. In 2013, I had a stroke. And one of the things that the therapist had told me, my doctors had told me, that, you know, the lingering effects that I had was that my grip, because I had complained, you know, I'm not gripping things too well. And they says, oh, well, that's probably going to be a lingering thing you have. So I have been laboring under this. I don't have a grip to the point where at Christmas, I am the roast person. I would have my nephews come put it in the oven and take it out of the oven because I didn't want to drop it. But as I was coming around the corner, coming around this corner, I remember Kansas's teaching, not be moved by what you hear. I hung on to that vase. I came down here to door nine. Kim opened the door. I was damp down the front, but me and that vase walked in here with those flowers and that grip, but I, no. And it, here it is, since 2013, I have been walking around afraid to pick things up because I didn't think I had a grip. But as of that day, and that word, see, people give you a word, it may not be, and they'll say, this is a word for somebody. It may not be that word at that moment, but that word, remember that, because she spoke those words, and that word was for me. Do not be moved by what you hear. You don't live to be a Jack Benny 39 like I am. Jack Benny, 39 and a half. Some of you don't even know the reference to Jack Benny, but that's okay. Uh, without experiencing God's healing and God's healing grace. His healing grace was there before the cancer scare. 22 years later, he was right there while I was carrying that vase of flowers. In the name of Jesus, I am so happy to be here. And I know all of us have many instances where we have said, oh, that was luck. It was not luck. It was not luck. That car that swerved and you missed, that wasn't luck. The bomb that flew and hit the ditch when I was in Iraq, that wasn't luck. Those were all God's grace. And I'm standing here as a testimony Jack Benny, 39 and a half, that the grace of, grace of God and his healing power is here, and it's real, and it's alive. There you go. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful testimony. Uh, I, I'm not used to this on my own. Okay, you can hear me. All right. So praise the Lord. Good to be with you. Um, tonight I have the topic of healing and spiritual warfare. And, you know, before I start talking about spiritual warfare, I want to talk a minute about the real focus of the Bible, because if we start right out talking about warfare, we can get a distorted view. Because the Bible, the first chapter of the Bible and the last chapter of the Bible, both have the same thing in them, a wedding. See, the Bible starts with a wedding, and it ends with a wedding. The wedding of Adam and Eve and the wedding of the Son of God to his bride, the church. 
and, and if we start talking, there's, this warfare might be in the middle, but the focus of the Bible is on the wedding. You know, it's about a wedding. It's not about warfare. So we are going to talk some about warfare, but God wants you to focus on the wedding. He wants you to focus on the glory and the wedding and the world to come and the fact that you're saved. But in this time, there is some warfare. There is some warfare. But we, we don't want to always be focused on fighting the devil. That's not the message of the church. It's something that comes up. But one of the best ways to fight the devil sometimes is to just rest, to just enjoy, to just focus on the wedding, the wedding that's coming soon. In Jesus' name. So praise God. Uh, but the Bible does teach us that there are spiritual forces that harass believers and resist the will of God. So we all understand, we, we know the scripture, Ephesians 6, 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Whether you realize it or not, you are in a war. You are in a spiritual war. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, you have an adversary. He walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brothers throughout the world. So we do have an adversary. And the New Testament teaches us, we all know that verse, uh, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, it's Satan that steals, kills, and destroys. Sickness and disease have their origin in the fall of man, the corruption of nature, and the actions of evil spirits. So it's good to know what are we fighting. When, when you're having a battle, you, what's the source of this conflict? Well, we're fighting those things, a fallen natural world. Pastor preached on that Sunday, Adam gave his authority. We share the planet with a maniac. And that maniac is wrecking stuff. And we're dealing with it. It is a warfare. But it's very clear that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And one of the things that the devil likes to do is he likes to sneak around and do things and deceive people into blaming God for them. You know, where, where people, they, they, they get their theology wrong. They get their, their knowledge of God and, and they want to blame God for what the thief is doing. Because he's like that. He's a deceiver. Now, uh, in Luke 13, 16, it says, And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Jesus acknowledged the kingdom of darkness as the source of this woman's problem. This woman whom Satan has bound. Didn't say God bound her. He said, shouldn't she be loosed? Now, our merciful God... He provides healing. He provides healing through natural means. You know, all of us have an immune system designed by God, built right into the system. He knew we'd be in this war. You have things in your body that will fight disease. They will fight germs. They will fight viruses. You know, they, if, if your body was operating perfectly, you have a system in it that you won't even get sick. But our immune system is fallen. It's compromised. So God put healing in our immune system. He put medicine in plants. He is behind the knowledge of science and medicine. We in the church, we're not against that. We embrace that. God is a healer. He put it in nature. Your immune system wasn't created by the devil. It was created by God. He wants you to be well. So we have natural healing. We're not against natural healing. We want all of it. I thank God for doctors. I thank God for medicine. I thank God for the things God's put in my body. But we also have supernatural healing, spiritual healing. You know, we have, we have, and we have that through prayer, through the anointing, and through the gifts of the Spirit. So the promise of healing, you know, when you're in a battle, you, you need to be clear about some things. And the promise of healing is one of the yes and amen promises of the Bible. See, when you go to pray about should you marry Bob or should you marry George, you don't have a clear scripture on that. See, God might tell you no. God might tell you don't marry Bob. He might say don't move to Texas or I want you to go to Florida or lots of things about your life. Those are prayers of guidance. But when it comes to healing, 
See, it says, by his stripes we were healed. See, healing is a fact in God's mind that he settled on the cross. And we need to sell it in our heart. God wants us healed. God wants us healed. He's made provision for our healing. And, and we, don't, we don't need to determine if it's God's will to heal us. It is, Jesus told, the guy said, Lord, you can, if you're willing, you can heal me. He said, I'm willing, be clean. God's answer to you tonight is, I am willing. The problem is never in God and his will for your healing. See, so many times we approach healing like we're trying to convince a reluctant God. And the goal of prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance, but overcoming the enemy's resistance. See, I'm going to say that again. The goal of prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance, but overcoming the enemy's resistance. The Lord says, I am the Lord who heals you. Exodus 15, 26. First Peter 2, 24 says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live to righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. You always, that scripture needs to be, we need to hit that one over and over. But we live in this space, and I call it the gap. We've heard that in the Bible, the gap. Well, the gap between God's promise and our current problem, that's the battlefield of faith. See, that's that gap between what you read in the word, that promise, and then what are you currently experiencing? The word promises me healing, but I am experiencing sickness. There's a gap there. And the word of God says he's looking for people to stand in the gap. The, back, the gap is where you're going to fight this battle. It's going to be fought in your emotions. It's going to be fought in your relationship. It's going to be fought in your mindset, that space between the promise and the problem. And, and the Lord wants to close that so you experience his divine will. So that's what we call, that is the place of spiritual warfare. It's the place of spiritual warfare. Now we can learn a lesson out of the uh, 10th chapter of Daniel. And this, these are things, you know, that have helped me in my life. And, you know, healing is a subject that we've all experienced and seen disappointments. But God gives us a peek behind the veil. He shows us things in his word that can help us in our mindset and how we approach healing, how we wage this war of faith for the promise. And in the 10th chapter of Daniel, you know, Daniel has prayed. He, he's read in the word, I believe in the ninth chapter, he's read about the promise of God to bring Israel out of captivity after 70 years. And Daniel's read that. And he didn't sit in his easy chair and say, oh, 70 years have gone by. I just think this thing's going to happen. He didn't just sit on the promise with no effort. It says Daniel began to fast. He began to pray. He began to seek God about this promise. He knew the promise was true, but he went after that promise. He wasn't passive. He didn't just say, oh, it's the will of God. It'll happen. He went after that promise, and he wanted understanding. And in the 10th chapter, Daniel had set himself to fast and pray for understanding of the vision, and he fasted and prayed 21 days. And it says on the 21st day, an angel came to him. And he said these words. We need to hear these words tonight. When we're in a battle for healing, when we're in a battle for our families, our situation, he said, Daniel, the day you prayed, I was sent. The moment you prayed, I was sent. The moment you prayed, I was sent. When you pray for healing, the answer is sent. It's sent that moment. There's no hesitation on God's side. But Daniel gives us insight. He said, but the prince of Persia resisted me. A principality was resisting Daniel's answer. The kingdom of darkness knew Daniel's revelation would impact all of us even today with prophetic understanding. And he put up strong principality to block that thing. So we can learn our lesson. What if Daniel had quit on the 19th day? What would he have said? Oh, what if he'd quit on the 20th day? Oh, I guess God didn't want me to understand. I guess God's not answering my prayer. I did the word. I did everything it said, and it just didn't happen. Daniel did not know how long. He didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. But thank God the Bible shows us. We can see behind the scenes there is some warfare. 
And Daniel broke through and got the answer. So praise God. It, it's, it's so important to recognize that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You know, the weapons of our warfare for healing are faith, our worship. They're the word of God, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the fruit of the spirit, especially patience. You know, patience and rest and peace. Those are the things you wage war for for rest in the midst of trying circumstances, in the midst of symptoms. So our, our spiritual conflict is, set, is fought on this battlefield of our mindset. And, and both the angelic realm of angels and the demonic realm, they, they have assignments on you. There's an assignment that's to bring you into alignment so you come into an agreement. Now I'm going to say that there's an assignment to bring you into alignment so that you come into agreement. Because the Bible teaches us about the power of agreement, where two or more agree. So God has an assignment, an angelic assignment to you, to bring you into alignment with his word, to bring you into agreement with his word so his word can come to pass. But there is a spiritual warfare. The enemy is trying to bring you into alignment with his deception so you come into agreement about why it's not happening. And that is the warfare that we face. It says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And we cast down what? Vain imaginations. The battles are in your thoughts. The enemy comes to our thoughts. Our minds model, model, model the future. And we're biased towards negativity. You know, I don't know how many times in my life I've, I've, I've modeled out going broke. I've modeled out being sick. I've planned my funeral four or five times. None of it ever happened. How much time do we worry and model about things that don't happen? But it's the enemy projecting, projecting, projecting. But God wants us to come into alignment and agreement with his word. That's the battle we're in. Now, divine healing, it flows out of God's love. It's not just a transaction. It's not a one place in time thing. It's God's healing flows out of his love for you. You have to bathe yourself in the love of God, in the knowledge that he loves you. And, and it flows out of his love and it's manifested by the Holy Spirit through what we call the anointing. See, the Bible says God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good, healing everyone who was oppressed by the devil. So Jesus Christ himself did his healings through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The, our, the Word of God records that he did no miracles before he was baptized in the Spirit because he came as a man. He was fully God, never stopped being God, but he did his miracles after he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. He did it through the anointing. Now, the anointing, you know, I, you know, people are, what is the anointing? Well, the best definition I've heard is the anointing is the active presence of the Holy Spirit that imparts the ability to do or receive God's will in a situation. It's the active presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, and that's what's here. The Holy Spirit is present tonight. Now, we know God is everywhere at all times. But it, the Bible tells us where two or three gather in my name, he's there in a special way. See, when there's agreement, when there's unity, when we come together, there's a strength. And, and our agreement brings this anointing, the active presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and we can receive God's will. Now, we need an anointing of the Spirit to both give and receive. You know, Paul talks about the matters of giving and receiving to the Philippian church, I believe. And, you know, ministers are famous for that. They, they know how to give. They know how to give. They know how to give. But sometimes they have trouble receiving. And we need to know, we need to ask the Lord, Lord, give me an anointing to receive. Give me the ability to receive things from the Holy Spirit. Now, the anointing of God, the active presence of the Holy Spirit, it's tangible. That means it's, it's a real thing. It's not just a, an emotion or a mental condition. It's a real substance of God. It's the presence of the Spirit resting on or in someone. 
And we see that from the Bible. In the Old Testament, there's a story of a, of a prophet, and he was buried. And years later, they threw a dead man's body onto his bones. And there was enough anointing in that prophet's bones that that dead man came to life. The anointing, it resides in things. It, it can abide in people and places. And, you know, the Apostle Paul, he was full of the anointing so much that, that they came and put items of clothing on him to get that anointing on it. And they would take those to people and they were healed. Now today, you know, in our marketing, there's ministries that market the anointed cloth, but sometimes there's no anointing. Because you can't market it, you can't fake it. It's something that comes from God through prayer, through fasting, through calling on God. But the Holy Spirit's anointing is a real thing. And, and we, need to, we need to realize that that anointing is how God moves. And in, in, in the last few years, Pastor Charles has called this altar. You'll hear him say, this is the altar of exchange. But I heard the Holy Spirit tell me tonight, he said, I want you to call it the altar of the anointing. That there's an anointing that's rising in this house. And, and healing is a collective in the church. It's the sum of our faith. You can, you can receive it on your own, but it, we're meant to carry one another's burdens. That's why we pray for one another. That's why we lift each other up and, and the anointing grows in the house. It's a collective experience. You know, I've been, I've lived long enough that I've been very sick a few times. And I had a fully blocked kidney stone and I wasn't remembering very well the last sermon I heard or three points and a point or what to do when you're sick. I was hurting. And sometimes you're just hurting. And, and that's when you need the brother and the sister to come beside you, to come underneath you, for someone else to carry that anointing for you. And all you have to do is have the faith to show up at the altar or to send in that prayer request. And then the power of God can work through your brothers and sisters. And that's the way the family of God is supposed to be. Now, Candace stepped into my message a little bit there, but saying that, uh, you know, healing, healing is not always immediate. It can be immediate, a miracle, or a process, a time of recovery. And in Mark 16, it says, they will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Recover is somewhat of a process. Luke 18, 43 says, and immediately he recovered his sight. Jesus prayed for the blind man and immediately. It was a miracle. Now, healing power also can sometimes be felt. I said it's tangible. The anointing is real. It's more than emotion. It's not somebody can hype you up. It is somebody who's prayed into and walking in the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes people feel it. It can be like electricity. You can see people shake. They'll tremble. They'll feel it. Sometimes they fall down. Sometimes they're, they're, they'll shout. It can be like that. But you know what? It's never hardly like that for me. It's okay. We're all different. We all receive God's power differently. So God's power can be like electricity. But God's power, many more times, to use an analogy, it's like radiation. Now, I don't know if you've ever had medical treatment with radiation. But radiation is a, the nuclear power that's contained in, in atoms. And the Word of God says God holds everything together by the Word of His power. And if you just take a ball of uranium the size of a basketball and you split it, it'll destroy an entire city. There's a lot of power in God's word that's even in matter. Now, when you go to the doctor for radiation treatment, they're going to point a beam at, at you. And you know what? You won't feel a thing. You will not feel a thing. But if I took a radiation source out in this auditorium tonight, a powerful one, and left it open... You wouldn't feel a thing, but in two or three days, we'd all start dying. And God's power is positive. It's not negative, but it's so many times it's like radiation. And we can get in our senses. We can see our brother to the left shook and our sister to the right, she fell. And I didn't feel anything. Oh, I guess God didn't do anything. But the power of God, many times it's like that radiation. And you know, when you go to the doctor for radiation, He'll say, oh, you need 20 treatments. You need 10 treatments. You need 15 treatments of radiation. 
You won't feel any of them, but over time, you'll start to feel their effect. Over time, it will build up and it will have its effect. And the power of God is like that for many people. You know, we make healing this one-time deal. I'm going down to the altar. I'm getting my healing. Oh, oh, I guess I didn't get it. That's the wrong way to approach it. We are not trying to convince a stubborn God. Begging and, oh, let's pray again. You pray and you believe, and then you go for your treatments. The anointing is the treatment of God, the tangible presence of God from your brother, your sister at the altar, through the pastor, through the elders, through believers. If you're in a service and you see someone just lost in the glory of God and the tears are on their face and they're in the presence of Jesus, get that person to put hands on you. Get that person to lay hands on you. You know, the pastors can't do it all. That's why they have elders and deacons and believers. But you want to get people to lay hands on you that have just been with Jesus. They've just been with Jesus. But it's so powerful, you know, know, this this source. And, you know, in, in radiation treatment, they keep the source in a lead box. And then they crank it out. But see, in the kingdom of God, the source is always out. And we are the ones that are hidden in the box. We are hidden in our busyness. We're hidden in our unbelief. We're hidden in our skepticism. But I'm telling you, one of the things for spiritual warfare, for healing, is to expose yourself to the source. Expose yourself to the source. Expose yourself to the Word of God. Get along with this promise. And when you open it up, realize the radiation of God's healing and love is coming out of that Word. Get alone with some worship music and say, God, I am just exposing myself to the source of life. I'm exposing my... When we're up here at the altar, when you're worshiping, I always think of myself like that. I'm just soaking in the glory. I'm just in the healing presence of God Almighty. And then I will get others who walk in that. Hey, put some of that anointing on me. And I might feel it. I might not feel it, but I'm going to let it work. I'm going to come back. If if you've been in these series of meetings and you've been to the altar, it's not that God hasn't healed you. There is resistance in in, in, in in the natural and the spirit. There has to be enough force to move that thing. And Jesus had the spirit without measure. And the church as a whole contains the spirit of Jesus Christ. But we have a measure of the spirit. And we want to increase that measure. That's why we invite you to pray in the prayer meetings. We invite you to seek God because it increases the measure of the spirit that's operating here at Bethel. See, there's an anointing and a measure. And the limiting factor is not God's will. It's your hunger and your thirst. The collective thirst of the body. Are we hungry for God? Are we hungry to see healing? Do we want to see our brother and sister healed? And we have to go after it. You know, I've heard it said that God's promises are like rubber bands. And it's up to you how far you stretch them. See, you know, there's, there's there's something called spiritual hunger, going after God, pursuing the, the glory of God. And I guess my, I'll, I'll try to wind it down here, but the last point I want to make is Jesus himself, the son of the living God, anointed of the Spirit, who had the Spirit without measure, he laid hands on a blind man twice. Think about that. He laid hands on a blind man twice. It wasn't a matter that he didn't want to heal the man. It was God's will. But Jesus walking as the anointed Son of God, he laid his hands on that blind man and he said, tell me what you see. And the man said, I see men like trees walking. See, he didn't get a full manifestation. And what did Jesus do? Say, oh, you didn't have enough faith. Oh, you know, keep believing. Jesus put his hands on him again. He put his hands on him again. And he released more of that anointing. And then the man could see perfectly. What a powerful lesson for us. Don't give up pursuing your healing. Don't give up going after God for your healing. If you get hands laid on you, I praise God. If my symptom drops 5%, glory to God. Next time it might be 10. Oh, next, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Maybe it's 15. Maybe it's 20. We're going all the way. We're going to keep pushing. We're going to go. We're going to pursue healing because God wants you healed. God wants you healed. 
So, in, in just in, in winding this up, and we'll have, to, you know, I know the Holy Spirit wants to move. He wants to give you an opportunity, both on the live stream and here. You know, we said the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit, the active presence. See, we come in Jesus' name, so we know he's here. We know the Holy Spirit is here and willing to move. And you may have come down here five times, ten times. Come again. Get hands laid on you. No one, we're, not, we're not arguing with God. We're not convincing him. We're not begging him. We're releasing his anointing into your body to bring about a healing and a cure. So I would say be fully convinced of the promise. Be like Daniel. Dig into your word. Don't be surprised by resistance. See, the enemy doesn't want you healed. He hates believers. But the Bible says healing is the children's bread. Now, you know, when, when, when Jesus was going to be born, Herod went and killed all the children because he wanted to stop the salvation of man in his infancy. And that happens in revival. That happens in healing. Your greatest resistance is at the beginning. Your greatest resistance is when you're going after something new. The devil wants to discourage you. He will resist. He will resist. You have to be fully convinced. I'm standing. I'm not backing off. I'm not going to blame God. All I, I, you know, I don't know everything. But one thing I do know is God is not your problem. When you get to heaven... You're going to, you know, I hear a lot of people, when I get to heaven, I've got some questions for God. You're going to fall on your face. And you're going to find out all your questions are pretty meaningless. Because God is not the issue. The will of God for your healing is not the issue. He is a healer. But we, you know, skeptics say, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. But believers say, I'm, I'm going to believe it until I see it. So you got to keep the switch of faith turned on. Faith is what completes the circuit. Faith gives the anointing and power something to flow down. When you just get control of your mouth and you get control of your mind, you say, Holy Spirit, I don't understand everything that's going on. And believe me, we don't understand everything that's going on. But we do understand we serve a good God who is a healer. He is a healer. He is a healer. So, you know, as I was coming up here, I just, I, I heard the Holy Spirit talking to me. And, and he was just singing a song to me. And he said, there's healing in the glory. There's healing in the glory. There's healing in my glory. Will you hunger and thirst for the glory? Will you hunger and thirst for my presence again? Will you sit with me in the quiet place? Will you lay carnal things down and seek my face? Oh, will you lift up worship and praise before the throne of the Ancient of Days? Will you receive all I have for you, says the Lord? Will you receive all I died to give to you, says the Lord. Oh, there's healing in the glory. Oh, there's healing in the glory. Oh, there's healing in your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give God a praise again. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I just sense for the next few moments, uh, I want to, to open up the, the, the altar of anointing. The anointing for healing. And if you're in this house today and you have a need, I want you to make your way to the altar. And if nobody moves to the altar, I'm just going to pray. We're going to move on. That means everybody's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord God. Glory to you, God. You all just come on come on down to the, make sure you come on in the altar. Get out the aisle. The altar runs from one end to the other. Find a place at the altar. Hallelujah. Glory to you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, find a place. Spread out. Y'all spread out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you, God. Thank you, God. I'm with you all. Get there. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. So, Pastor Jose and Pastor Ron and Brother David, Kevin is already in place, Candace. If y'all begin to move out, hallelujah. Glory to you, God. Come on. We're going to pray. Brother Darrell, if you don't mind coming, would you come and pray? We're going to pray. Find somebody. We're going to pray. See, Brother David, just he just just set he just set the stand. He let you know that, you know, we lay hands on one another. The Bible told us to do that. We can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And so we're going to do that tonight. As an act of faith in the Lord. We are going to believe him. And we're going to believe for healing. I'm going to pray a corporate prayer. And while we are praying that prayer. You all pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Father, we come now, God. We're just believing you, God. God, we know this. There's anointing. There's a healing anointing, God, at the altar tonight. And we know, God, you told us, God, that we could lay hands on the sick. God, and they shall recover. So, God, we are believing that tonight. We're doing that tonight. God, we're just believing tonight, God, for healing. For healing, oh, God, at this anointing, at this anointed altar, God. We're believing for the healing in the name of Jesus, God. God, touch and deliver, set free, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. God, we're doing it according to your word, God. Lord, you said if any are sick among you, God, oh, God, let the elders pray. God, we're believing now, God. We're believing. We're laying hands Oh, God, we are believing for the healing in the name of Jesus. God, you the one that heals. God, we're just the vessels, God. And, Lord, we're being obedient to your word. You told us that we can lay hands on the sick. Hallelujah. Jesus, healing God, healing God. Lord, you know every need in the house. God, you know exactly, God, what, what's needed in this physical body. So, God, did you, God, will begin the work that you would manifest it, God, in their life. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Healing, healing. Oh, in the name of Jesus. God, touch, oh God, now. Touch now, God, by your mighty power. Oh God, your healing virtue. God, to flow down, God. Lord, into this, oh God, your, your daughter, God, right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, God, for your glory. God, for your glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Oh, in the name of Jesus, healing God. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we speak healing, God, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Oh, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory to you, God. Father, there are those right now, God, under the sound of my voice that are online tonight that stand in need of healing. And so, God, we are believing right now for that healing. We're believing now for that healing. We're believing now for that healing. Bruce, help them. We're believing now for that healing, God. Lord, that the healing will go, oh God, across the airways. God, the same power, God. Lord, that's at this anointed Oh, God, our altar tonight, God, the, uh, the altar of anointing, God, will flow from this place, God, and flow through the airways tonight and begin to touch those, God, online tonight there that are in need of healing tonight. God, we speak it now. We speak the healing now, and we are claiming it right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, let it begin today. God, light the fire God, let it begin, God, to manifest itself. God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you right now. We thank you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you. We thank you right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, God, your healing, God. Oh, God, oh, in the name of Jesus, have your way in this life. God, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, heal, God. Deliver, set free. In the name of Jesus, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God told me to put my hands on you again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, shandanabas. Yandanabas. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Jesus. Shandanabas. Shurabas. Oh, God. Healing, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Shandanabas. Shurabas. Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, there it is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He's doing it. He's doing it. Hallelujah. He's doing it. He's doing it. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you now, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for your healing power, your virtue, God, that's flowing down, God, in this place across the airways right now. We thank you for it, God. We give you the glory for it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Though you're the altar, you keep praising God. You keep thanking him for your healing. You keep thanking him for your healing. Keep thanking him. Hallelujah. Glory to your God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Okay. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just while you just continue to stay in the presence of God, I just want to share just something, a testimony. It may be a little comical, but it's going to help you remember um, the story. Um, we have, in one of the bathrooms in our home, we had a slow flushing toilet. And we've had a plumber to look at it. They can't really find what the problem is. So it just, you just had to keep flushing. You had to keep flushing. It kept to keep flushing. And after a while, it decides to do what it was designed to do. Well, we just went on about our business. And you know, when you use the bathroom, you flush your toilet. That's what we do. So we hadn't really paid that much attention to it. And then we prayed on, we were in prayer Tuesday morning. And Pastor Charles, when he, we were praying together, he prayed, he said, Lord, we believe Psalm 34. We believe Psalm 4, 34 that we're going to bless you at all times and so we can praise, praise, let your praise continually to be in our mouth. We're going to magnify your name. We're going to make your name great. We're not just, it's just not a Sunday morning thing. It's an everyday thing. We bless you at all times. Not just when we feel their power and everybody's together on Sunday. We're going to bless you when it don't even look like it. So we just went on in that vein and we just started praising God. And we just noticed as the day went on, we started flushing the toilet and the toilet, shoom, shoom. Every time you flush it, shoom. Wednesday, every time you flush it, shoom. Did what? But the principle is this. Sometimes... We are just looking for, the, um, we pray about something and we just, well, God, it, it may not happen. But just go about your business and just keep flushing it like you're supposed to flush it. And after a while, you go, wait a minute. God, you don't touch this thing. And it's doing what it's supposed to do. We, the Bible tells us we should wait expectantly for the Lord. If we're standing at the altar and we're believing God for healing, wait expectantly for the healing. It may not manifest this moment, but as you go about your day, it's going to be just like that toilet stool. Floom! It's going to do exactly what it's supposed to do. When you go to the mailbox, every day, sometimes on Sunday, you go into the mailbox because that's in the habit of what we do. You go, if the mail ain't in there, you, it don't stop you going the next day. The next day, you go to that mailbox, you look, ain't nothing in there, you go back in the house, the next day, you go to the mailbox and you look, something in there, you take it out, the next day, you go to the mailbox, you look. It's a principle. Keep expecting God to heal you. And just like that toilet start flushing, we ain't touched it, ain't no other plumber came and looked, it started doing what it was designed to do. God already did the work on Calvary's cross. Walk in your healing. It's a finished work. It's a finished work. Amen. So y'all think about that toilet stool and believe God for your miracle. <laughs> Amen. It's comical, but it has, it has good purpose. Good purpose. Good purpose. We tested that thing out. We run the water in the shower or run the water in the sink. All kind of, we normally used to hit noises in there. Nothing. All of a sudden. That's how God manifests himself. That's how he'll manifest himself in our lives. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands to God tonight. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you, God, for your word tonight. And God, we thank you, God, Lord, for your healing anointing, God, the glory, God, of your healing. Lord, we thank you for it tonight. And God, we receive it. And God, we know, God, Lord, that it will manifest itself. God, that it will, be, it will show up. All we have to do, God, is believe and be thankful, God, Lord, for the, for the beginning of the recovery. God, as, 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 as God, it begins from the laying on of hands, God, the healing process is already beginning. And before we know it, God, we'll be walking in that healing. God, we'll be feeling, oh God, that the thing that was there is gone. And, and God, we'll know, God, Lord, that we'll have those testimonies that'll come forward, God, like Miss Gloria's testimony, God. God, where they saw it, but then they didn't. God, where it was, but then it wasn't. And God, that's the testimony, God, that we're going to receive, God, as the healing, God, manifest itself. Lord, we thank you for that tonight, and we praise you, God. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 Expect it. Expect it. Expect it. Amen.